Good morning, Church of New Destiny Worldwide. We are back here again. Listen, you are God's sheep, okay? You are not lost. Nothing will happen to you. The Lord is with you, and he's the shepherd of your soul. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we give you praise this morning. And so for you that are listening to me this morning, listen, God is concerned about you. He cares about you. He will not sleep or slumber regarding you or anyone that is even related to you or anything that concerns you. God loves you. Yes, you. You in South Africa. You in the Americas. You in Canada. You, wherever you are in the world, in Nigeria, wherever you are in the UK, Jesus loves you. And he will never stop loving you. He loves your little ones. He loves your babies. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to title this. He is watching over you. He is watching over you. Praise the Lord. The Lord watches over his people. And so we have read from Psalm 23 this morning that the Lord is my shepherd. I don't know about somebody else. And that's why this psalm is very important that you confess it as regular as you can. Because you are owning God. You are, you are making him yours. The Lord is my shepherd. And therefore I shall not want. What do you need in your workplace right now? The Lord will shepherd you through it. And you will not be found wanting in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What is it that is missing in your life? Some of us have a void in us because of how we've been raised or what happened in our childhood or what happened whilst we were growing up. And the Lord says, I will be your shepherd. If you don't have a dad, I will be your dad. If you didn't have a mom, I will shepherd you. If you don't have friends, I will be your shepherd. If you're suffering, I will be your shepherd. And when you look at the sheep, like I was saying earlier, when you look at the sheep, sometimes they do go astray. It's natural for a sheep to go astray. The responsibility of the shepherd is to bring the sheep into, to, into the fold. Bring the sheep back into the fold. Perhaps you've walked away from God. Perhaps you even think there is no God. Perhaps you're thinking, you know what? I've been in the Lord. I've been in Christianity. Because a lot of people talk about God like, you know, uh, God doesn't care. God doesn't exist. Uh, God doesn't look after me. God doesn't do this and do that. But the Lord says in Psalm 23, David said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. You are part of the fold. You are part of the sheep. Let's go back to Psalm 100. The Bible says that Psalm 100 verse 3, know that the Lord, he is God. I want you to know that the Lord, he is your shepherd. He is your God. He is our God. You are in the same fold as I am. If I'm losing faith, God will bring me back into the fold. If I'm losing heart, God will bring me back into the fold. And that is why Jesus prayed. He prayed that our faith will not fail. He prayed. He said, God, don't take them out of the world, but preserve them, protect them, keep them from the evil one. We are the sheep of his pasture. Listen, it says, no, in Psalm 100 verse 3, that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us. Nobody can tell me that God did not create you. We are not monkeys. We did not come from monkeys or any animal or any virus. Viruses are subject to man. Man can create a virus, but man cannot create another human being. They can try all the like. They can try and mimic man, mimic voices, simulations, all sorts of technology. But nobody on the face of this earth can create a human. Nobody can create a human being. I can also tell you with full confidence that the best selling book in the whole wide world, go and research it, is the Bible. Nobody will tell you. It is the Bible. And it has lasted throughout the ages. And the Lord says, I will satisfy you with long life. You are the sheep of his pasture. Listen, it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. For you who's listening to me, 
If you are looking for purpose in your life, you need to know first that you are not your own creator. You are not the author of your own life. You cannot fulfill purpose in your own self. The void that you're feeling is a missing God. There's something missing. It could be Jesus that is the missing piece. Listen, when you come to Christ, you find peace. You may not have money. Money doesn't define peace. It doesn't bring peace. In fact, it can add more problems to our lives. God will bring you from the unknown into the known, into his presence. He will love you. I'm telling you, he's a loving God. I am a living testament of the love of God. I can tell you too many testimonies of how good God is. Praise the Lord. God is very good. And so let's go back to Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let me tell you the reason why we find ourselves lacking. We walk away from the fold. We don't, we don't stay where the shepherd has placed us. When you stay where the shepherd is, you will hear the sound of the shepherd. You will hear the leading of the shepherd. Sometimes the shepherd will move the sheep from the fold and take them into another pasture. Where the pasture is green. The sheep don't know that. It's the shepherd that looks for the pasture where the sheep must be. God knows your needs. God knows what you need. He knows what you require. He knows what every, your everyday will look like. He knows your breathing. He knows you're going out. He knows you're coming in. He knows your thoughts from afar. The sheep don't know who they even are. He says, you are the sheep of my pasture. He's telling you that you are mine. I chose you. I called you by name. Listen, you are not your own. And no harm will come to you if you trust the shepherd. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not be wanting. In the name of Jesus, David said that I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. You will not be forsaken. In the mighty name of Jesus, your seed will not beg for bread. Your children will not beg for bread. You will not be forsaken. Even the children of Israel that were so stubborn, they were stubborn children. Look, they had very stubborn identity, but God did not give up on them. He still shepherded them. He still covered them. He still provided manna for them. He still took them and never navigated them through the wilderness. The Bible says that yea, though I walk through the valley, we will get there of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for you are with me. He never left his people. God never leaves his sheep. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You may feel that he's not there, but I can tell you it's not by your feeling. It's by your knowing. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. In this valley, I will not be wanted. In this job, I will not be wanted. In my marriage, I will not be wanted. In my body, I will not be wanted. In the name of Jesus, I will never be found wanting. My children shall not be found wanting. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says in Psalm 23 verse 2, He makes me to lie down. There are times when we're anxious. We can't lie down. You know, there's a whole world going on around us. These sheep, they have ears. Sometimes they can't lie down. There are flies about. There, there are lies that want to pinch at them. There are things that want to suck at their blood. There are demons all around. The sheep are not uh, 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 exempt from something pinching at them or the wolf looking for them. There's wolves all around them. But listen, he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside the still waters. Because I don't even know if I went out there to just eat anything, I might even die. But the shepherd of my soul will watch over me. He will make sure that I do the right things. He will look after my health. He will look after my well-being. He will provide water for me when I need it. Let me tell you, the world is going down. It's not a curse. I'm telling you from what I can see in the realm of the spirit. The world is going down. But as they're going down, there is a lifting up for the children of God. The Lord will shepherd you through that going down. Through all of the things that they're going to be saying to put fear in the heart of man. Through all of the things they're going to be doing to control you and to control me. But we have the shepherd of our souls. You don't need to be afraid because he will make you to lie down. And you will lie down in green pastures when there is no green. When there is famine, he will make you to lie down in green pastures. Sir. When there is nothing for you to eat, he will make you to lie down in green pastures. Sir. Something will just happen that God will make a way for you. When the world 
world is going one way, the Lord will take you in another direction. He will make you to lie down in green pastures. You will not lack any good thing. Your children will not lack. If there's no job out there, I said he will make you to lie down in green pastures. I'm telling you today in the mighty name of Jesus that he will lead you beside the still waters. Why is God leading you and I? Uh, the Bible says he restores my soul. My soul can be troubled. Listen, listen, my soul can be worried. But the Lord will bring water to restore my soul. The Bible is the living waters. The Holy Spirit is the living waters. The Bible says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. The Holy Spirit on the inside of you will make you still in such a way that people will be asking you, don't you see what is going on? When COVID-19 came, and people began to panic and people to began to run helter skelter the Lord told me my daughter be still I will lead you in the paths of righteousness for my namesake I want you to trust me in this you will not be denied you stay still and you will see the salvation of the Lord I will make you to lie down yes Lord I will make you to lie down in green pastures and listen I made my own decision I'm not going to go the way of the world I will go the way of the Lord and I'm telling you we we'll see the light today. We are seeing the light today because Jesus is the truth. He is the way. He is the truth and the life. He is the life. He does not tell lies, but the lies will be exposed. And the lies was exposed. Yes, Lord. And we begin to see it even now. Don't, don't be deceived by the enemy. Don't let the wolf uh, come at you. Hold on to your faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And say, he restores my soul. When you are going through pain, say, Lord, you restore my soul. When that pain is excruciating, it could be physical, it could be mental. It could be a heartbreaker. You will be speaking the word of God. He restores my soul. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When they bring you news about your son, about your daughter, when they bring you news about your health, you will begin to speak. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, whose report will you believe? The restorer of my soul. I will believe his report. Nobody can restore my soul. The, the, the doctor can give you medication to cure physical things, but they cannot cure soulish things. They cannot deal with the realm of the spirit. It's only Jesus that is spirit and is life. And the God of spirit and life who created you and I, he's saying, give me a chance. I will heal your soul. I will heal your spirit. I I will lead you beside the still waters. Yes, Lord. I will lead you in the paths of righteousness. For my name's sake, when you see sheep gone astray, you'll be looking for the shepherd. The shepherd is responsible for keeping the sheep. You cannot keep yourself. You cannot provide for yourself. You cannot make a way for yourself. You can't even keep your children. It's only the shepherd of your soul that can look after them. And that's why God is saying, I will lead you beside the still waters. Ah, for my namesake because people will ask where is your God even David said it he said let them not ask of me where is my God nobody will ask of you where is your God when you put your trust in God in the name of Jesus Christ yes Lord the Bible says that those who wait upon the Lord they shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings as eagles. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. They will run. They will not faint. They will walk. They will not be weary. You will not be fainting in the day of adversity. You will not be weary. Your strength will not be small because you are one of those that is waiting upon the Lord. Don't wait upon man. Don't wait upon your friends. Don't wait upon your husband. Don't wait upon your wife. Wait upon the Lord. The Bible says those who wait upon the Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord. Lord. Are you waiting upon the Lord? Or are you waiting for your manager? Are you waiting for your director? Are you waiting upon your friend? And that is why you are disappointed. Because friends don't have that power. It's the shepherd of our soul that keeps our soul, that provides for us, that keeps the shepherd. And he says, I will restore your soul. I will lead you in the paths of righteousness for my own name's sake. So that people will not say, where is your God? Praise the Lord. And then in verse 4 of Psalm 23, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You are going to walk through the valley regardless. He said, yes. He said, yes, although. Although. 
There are all those in our lives. Yes, we may walk through this sickness, this valley. We may walk through this disappointment. We may walk through this season that I'm looking for a job and I can't find. We may walk through this season that we've got bills to pay and we don't know where it's going to come from. We may walk through this season, the valley of the shadow of death, the valley of disappointment, the valley of negativity, the valley of sickness, the valley of lack. The valley of attacks. Sometimes you go through periods in your life where you have more attacks than necessary. You're just being attacked. Right, left, center. You go right, there's an attack there. You go left, there's an attack there. You say something, people shout at you. People knock you down. People hate on you. People read you wrong. There's just something that's not going right. You're trying to, to buy a car, the money's not there. You're looking for a job, you can't find a job. You want to get married, the husband is not coming. There's just some valley somewhere. You want your children to, to do well in life. Something is not happening. You want them to go to uni. They're saying, I don't want to study. All sorts of things are going on. But listen, that is just a valley of the shadow. It is not the valley of death. The valley is not definitive of an end. It's not an end of your story. It's a passing through. It's a chapter in your story. It's a chapter in your life. It's where you're going to come back and tell the story of how God has been good to you. How God has been good to me. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so the psalmist is saying, although I walk through, yes, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's not definitive that I'm going to die. I'm not going to die. I'm going to walk through this valley. And it says, I will not be afraid of the evil. I can tell you for sure that in the valley, there are all sorts of evils. You will hear howling. You will see nightmares. You will hear the lion roaring. All sorts of wolves will be shouting. All sorts of things are going on in the valley. Headaches, migraines, all sorts of disappointments. You've gone for 10 interviews. There's nothing that's come from it. Friends will say, I will help you, but there's no helper. Family will say, I will be there for you, but there's nobody there for you. you find yourself on your own, walking alone through this valley of the shadow of death. But God is telling me to tell somebody, for you are with me. The psalmist says, for you are with me. I am with you. God is telling somebody this morning, I am with you. I am with you. Although you are walking through the valley where you are now, I am with you. David said, for you are with me. He's not doubting whether God is is there. Some of us will say, God, are you there? He's not saying that. He's making a declaration for you are with me. In this story, maybe your bank has called you and they want to shut down your account. Listen, listen, listen. Banks can shut down accounts and God can make them reopen it. Jobs can come and go and God will give you a new job. Sickness will come and go. It will not be your portion for life. In the name of Jesus, children will behave the way children behave, but they will turn out in praise. In the name of Jesus, you who say that that you cannot be anything or your business is going to die. uh, God says, no, for where there's life, there is hope. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In that valley, God is speaking that I will comfort you. I will be your comforter. I will carry you through. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will not let you down. Many times we feel let down, not because God let us down, but we let our faith go. So we feel let down. You must hold on to faith. Faith is the currency of heaven. You must hold on to faith. Psalm 100 says, that know that God, he is God, the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us. He has made you. He created you for his own purpose. You are fitted for him. Yes, he has built you. Yes, 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 yes. You were born in his own image. An image is everything in this world. People go on Instagram so that they can put their image there. They go on Facebook so that they can put their image there. But whose image are you putting out for the world to see? You are the image 
image of Christ. You were created in his own image. The image that the world ought to see is that you are the mirror of the living God. You are the mirror of Jesus. Jesus was the mirror of his father. Hallelujah, Jesus. He created us in his own image. Genesis 1.27. The Bible says again that God created mankind in his own image and then it repeats in the image of God. He created them. Male and female, he created them. You and I are made in God's image. How can God deny you then uh, that you are not his own? How can he abandon you? You who bear his image. You have value. You have value. You are valuable. God knew that you had something to give in this world. That is why he created you. Some people don't know their purpose because they don't have God. But when you find God, when you when you seek him and you find him, you will begin to fulfill the purpose in your life. You are a mirror. You are a mirror. Or you're the very image of God. Yes, you are meant to be a reflection of God. When people are looking for God, they will find him in you because you are reflecting the image of your maker, an image of God himself. That is who you are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So God has made us mirror-like. You are the mirror of God. And that's why Jesus said, whatever the Father says is what I say. He didn't speak any word out of tune. He didn't speak any word out of that is not from God's mouth. Everything that he spoke was the word that came out of the mouth of the Father. What are you speaking over your situation? When have you spoken over your situation? Because that situation that you're going through, that valley is subject to change. He said, my rod and my staff, they will comfort you. He created you as the sheep of his pasture. Your purpose is to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, when those insects come at the sheep, let's go there. Let me, let me continue. Let, let me go there. Let's go to verse 5. The Lord says, you prepare. The Bible says, you prepare a table before me. This tells me that as, as sheep, I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat, about what I'm going to drink. I don't have to worry because he's prepared the table for me in the presence of my enemies. Your enemies are part of God's purpose for your life. Listen, 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 listen. Don't get it wrong. Your enemies have to be there to witness and see the goodness of God in the land of the living. The Bible says you will eat the goodness of God in the land of the living. The enemy, the devil don't like you. He hates you because you're the very image of God. He lost that image. He's no more a reflection of God. He had all the opportunity. He had the privilege. He had the position. He had the elevation. He had the presence of God. He could behold God in a moment. He is the one that was standing in the presence of God. But listen, he was disobedient. He was envious. He was jealous and the Lord cast him down out of heaven. So now he's lost his image. He's ugly. He's evil. He's jealous of you. He wishes you and I evil. He doesn't want us to prosper. He attacks our destinies. He doesn't want you to marry. He won't allow you to even try and get that job. And so you've got to stand and begin to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not watch. I shall not want. Sorry. I shall not want. He who watches over me neither sleeps nor slumbers. The Lord will watch over me. Listen, the Bible says that God has prepared a table before me. That's what you need to be telling the devil, the, the enemy of your soul. Yeah, that God has prepared a table before me in your presence. There's a table before me in your presence. That job, I will get it in your presence. In your presence, I will be well. In your presence, I will be well. Are you there? Are you there? You are afflicting me, but you will see my healing. You will witness my healing. You will see my salvation. You will witness my breakthrough. It's not going to be behind your back. Yes, you'll be scattered. You'll be far away from me, but you will still see it. You will see what God has done in my life. This is what God is telling me to tell somebody. The good things that I've done for you, the devil will witness it. Your enemies will witness it. They will weep. They will, they will gnash their teeth. Yeah, the devil will gnash his teeth over you in the name of Jesus Christ. And listen, this is to top it all. You see, when that sheep, 
when the lice comes, you know, when the lice wants to land on the sheep and is sucking their blood, all the parasites that come and want to make the sheep uncomfortable instead of them enjoying their wool and just enjoying their lives, the, the parasites come and they want to suck on the blood of the sheep, you know, the shepherd then comes and he anoints the sheep. He rubs the sheep over. The shepherd has come. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. You anoint my head with oil. How come God is anointing your head with oil? Because you've given your life to Jesus, the anointing and the anointed one. The oil of joy. His name is Jesus. That is what God has poured over you. Jesus gave himself for you. He is the anointing. He is the anointing one. God has anointed your head with oil. Your cup will run over in the mighty name of Jesus and the world will witness it. You are here. Your purpose is to display the glory glory of God by imaging him. That is your purpose. That is to display the glory of God in your office, in your situation. They will see you enjoying God. I used to know a lady, a lady friend of mine. She, she's been living in the States for so many years now. She moved from the UK to the States. And this lady never gives up. She's always smiling. She's always singing. Even at work, when things are bad, they know her as singing person. I don't want to mention her name. And people, they just don't understand her. She's always singing, always smiling. And this lady just keeps going far. When you're singing in the midst of adversity, when you find praise and worship, sometimes you don't feel like it, but you've got to. You have to. Because all oh, your enemies will be scattered at once. They hate it when you're worshiping. You see, the type of worship that Satan loves is... Lord, where are you? Lord, my children. Lord, my job. Lord, my body. Lord, this. And Lord, that. And that's the type of worship that the enemy is looking for. But when you begin to worship him, that's why the Bible says we must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit. You tune in to the realm of the spirit. You zone out of your situation. Zone out of your problems. Zone out of the earth. And begin to enter into the spirit. And you begin to sing new songs. You could bring your Bible and begin to, to, to just read the Psalms out loud. You read the Psalms. The worship places. The praises. Look, the Bible says in, 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 in Psalm 100 verse 4. Enter. Enter. My sister and my brother. Enter into his gates. Not the gates of problems. Not the gates of complaining. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. You're saying, Lord, why should I be thankful when things are not going well? Well, the, 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 the principle of heaven is thanksgiving. The language of heaven is faith. By faith, you're giving him thanks that this too will pass away. This situation will end. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord, my shepherd, will guide me, will keep me. I will have no need for be wanting anything because he is my shepherd. My trust is in him. My confidence is in him. The Bible instructs us to not cast away our confidence for it has great recompense of reward. God will reward your faith. He will reward your confidence. He will reward you when you begin to praise him in the midst of adversity. Isn't it easy when you win the lottery or when something happens, you know, that is good. Isn't it wonderful when you, when, when, when you see, people say seeing is believing. When you see things and then you begin to praise. No, 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 no. Jesus said, that blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. There's a blessing for when you have not seen what you're believing for. You are believing. The faith that you're using is the substance of things to come. You are unlocking miracles from heaven. That's how to unlock miracles by faith. Not by moaning, not by groaning, not by complaining, not by giving up. Not by, you know, we're just talking, talking, talking about the situation and not speaking into the situation, not speaking life into that skeleton. Our problems are skeletons. They have no life, but the word of God is life, is peace, is joy. The purpose of God, of your life, is to enjoy God. You are meant to enjoy the shepherd. The sheep enjoy the shepherd. For as long as they are in the fold, they are taken care of. For as long as you've given your life to Jesus, he looks after us. And I'm telling you, he even looks after unbelievers. That's how merciful God is. That's how gracious he is. 
that he rains his reign upon the believer and the unbeliever. If God was wicked, the world will have no food. It will just be Christians that will have food to eat. Well, he provides for the needy. He's a very good God. Hallelujah. We are the perfect image of God. The purpose of your life is to enjoy God. Are you enjoying God? Are you enjoying God? I want you to think about it. Take a moment. Really think. Are you enjoying God? Are you pretending to enjoy God? There are two different things. We can pretend to enjoy God. Praise the Lord. Enjoy God. Enjoy God by praising him. Even in the little things. Thanking him. Being thankful for those little things. Sometimes I will go out somewhere and just come back safely. And I'll kneel down and say, Father, thank you for giving me a good day. Thank you for bringing me home safely. Because I take the, we take things for granted. What if I didn't make it home? What if something had happened on the way home? What if something had given up, the car broke down, something happened? No, God keeps us. He is our keeper, the shepherd of our soul. And so we must be thankful that we're the sheep of his pasture. You have that extra privilege that you've got Jesus as your own personal Lord and Savior. Whilst I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me and you. Can you imagine what you were doing when you didn't know Christ? What we were doing? We were going our own way. We'd gone astray so far. But the shepherd came. He introduced himself to us. And you, it's up to us. Because God gives us a will to say yes or no. I will come into the fold. And the day I entered that fold, I never looked back. He looks after my well-being. The enemy wanted me to go mad. There are many moments he tried me and tested me. There are many moments I could have lost my mind. But Jesus held on to me. He didn't let me go. The shepherd of my soul. He says I shall not want. He began to restore my soul that was broken. He began to restore me. He began to redress me. He began to readdress my issues. He began to teach me. He began to teach me how to have a good outlook on life. How to look at things the way he looks at. He says my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. He began to realign my ways. To align with his word. Hallelujah. And he began to lead me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. And so whether I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, his rod, his word, his staff is still comforting me. Be comforted today. Be lifted today. Knowing that Jesus Christ is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And then the Bible says, and this is a fact. And you need to say that throughout this week and forevermore. And teach your babies, teach your grandchildren, teach your children. This verse, Psalm 23 verse 6. Surely, this is an assurance. I'm not going to argue with you, devil. I, you don't have a stake here. Nothing. Don't talk to me. Surely, of a fact. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. Listen, listen. Goodness and mercy is my servant. They must follow me. I'm a royal priesthood. Glory be to God. <laughs> have you seen the shepherd bring a, a shepherd dog? <laughs> he will bring a dog to be around. So when the sheep is going one way, uh, the, the, the dog, or, or, and the dog also keeps the wolf away. Yeah, yeah. But when the sheep is about to go astray, the dog will just lead that sheep back into the fold. Glory be to God. Surely goodness and mercy, that is goodness for you. And mercy shall follow you. It shall follow me. That is, that is the word of God. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. When the devil wants to lead me astray, goodness and mercy shall follow me. When the devil is telling me, you will not get that job, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Uh, when he's saying that the doctor will bring you a bad report, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Uh, when Ola was in the hospital, goodness and mercy followed her out of there, brought her out of there. The goodness and the mercy of Almighty God that we don't give up. Uh, we speak on goodness and his mercy that no matter where the enemy takes you when she was in that valley goodness and mercy brought her out goodness and mercy will bring you out in that job will bring you out in your situation will bring you out of that valley the goodness and mercy of God will never leave you all the days of your life in the mighty name of Jesus the goodness and mercy of God will always follow you wherever you go the Bible says all the days of my life until I'm 299 88 86 
46, when I'm 46, when I'm 20, 25, the goodness of and mercy of God is following me. Now you are 40, now you are 50, the goodness of and mercy of God will continue to follow you. Now you are 55, you are 60, you are 65, you are 70. The goodness and mercy of God never grows old. It never becomes aged. It never grows tired. The goodness and mercy of God keeps following you. For as long as you are in this life and you are alive, God has allocated you goodness all your life. Goodness will follow you. Hatred will not follow you. Evil will not follow you. Wickedness will not follow you. The goodness of God will follow you all the days of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. And he says his mercy shall follow me. You will find mercy in front of the judge. You will find mercy in your workplace. You will find mercy. You will find mercy wherever you go. Your children will find mercy. Mercy will prevail over judgment. The goodness and mercy will work together. And they will follow you. When the judge is about to put a sentence out. They will say, let this mercy, we will release this one. We will give them a merciful judgment today. Mercy followed me into Christ. Ah, God looked at me and he knew I was going straight to the pits of hell. But the name of mercy, Jesus himself, is the goodness and the mercy that is following you everywhere you go. Until the day you pass into glory, goodness and mercy shall follow you. All the days of your life shall follow your children, shall follow your grandchildren, shall follow you out in your going out, shall follow you in your coming in, shall follow you wherever you go. Goodness and mercy shall follow you. When you wake up in the morning, you will say, Father, thank you for your goodness and mercy following me into the place of my work. Goodness and mercy, you sit next to me. You are right behind me. You are all around me. When I'm leaving the workplace and I'm going out, your goodness and mercy follows me. Wherever I go, the goodness and mercy of God is following me. I'm thanking you today for your goodness and mercy. Tomorrow for your goodness and mercy. The day after for your goodness and mercy. For mercies of yesterday. For your goodness yesterday. The Lord says uh, that I shall eat the goodness of God in the land of the living. Not in the land of the dead. Uh, the goodness of God will bring me wealth. Will bring me riches. Will bring me peace. Will bring me joy. Will bring me abundance. The Bible says uh, that I wish that you will prosper even above everything that your soul will prosper. Glory be to God. That is the goodness of God. Your soul prospering. You may not have a million dollars. You may not have a Rolls Royce, but you've got something that the earth cannot afford, that the earth cannot give to you, but only God can give. Only Jesus can give peace. Only Jesus can give joy. Only Jesus can give that peace that passes all understanding. To guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. The peace that God gives you is an unqualified peace. It cannot be quantified. The world cannot give it to you. The masters cannot give it to us. The director of your company cannot give it to you. Your manager can you, cannot give you that peace. Your friends cannot give you that peace. The world cannot give us that peace. The TV cannot give us that peace. Uh, no matter how much salary you earn, it cannot give you that peace. Only the peace that comes from Jesus is everlasting. The goodness and mercy of God is peace, is joy, is love, is everything in Christ. Whatever is in Christ is what God has given you. And that is the goodness of God. That is the mercy of God. That is the abundance of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we give you praise this morning. We magnify your holy name. The Bible says we should enter his courts into praise. Enter his courts with praise. Don't come to the presence of God. Just come in. God, give me A. Give me B. Give me C. It's very rude. You must come into the presence of God humble. With a contrite spirit, Lord, I thank you for yesterday. Lord, I thank you for who you are. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I magnify your name. Lord, I exalt you. Thank you for keeping my family. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for keeping my home. I love you. I appreciate you. Oh, yes, I bless you. And then after you've come and you've brought your, your, your thanksgiving and, you, and you've brought your praises, then you can say, Lord, I thank you that you will meet the needs of my family. You will meet the needs of my children. You will meet my needs in the workplace. You, that, that is when you have the right to ask. Let's not just come anyhow. If Timmy should be coming to me and just ask me for this, that every day, I will show him off one day. I will get tired of asking, asking, asking instead of just being a blessing. Praise the Lord, my sister, my brother. I just don't want to know you for what you've got. Some are 
are friends. Uh, 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 how can I call it? You know, friends that just love you for what you got. They're friends for position. It's human nature to be attracted to people who are beautiful, people who have money, people who come out rich. Or, you know, it seems like they're so rich, they're millionaires. We're attracted to them. Then the devil himself is attracted to them. But let me tell you the most beautiful Traction. The Bible says that godliness with contentment is great gain. When somebody is content, God will look after you. He will provide for you because his name is Jehovah Jireh. When you know the God that you're serving, because David said, the Lord is my shepherd. You see, he owned it. This is my God. I know him. He will provide for me. He will make me to lie down in green pastures. When my soul is troubled, he will restore my soul. You know, when I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, he will be my rod and my staff. There's something about this David that knows his God. The Bible says that those who know their God shall be strong. You see, when you know God, you gain strength. When you know God, you are elevated. When you know God, you can do mighty things. When David was fighting Goliath, what David did was that he was talking about the God, that the God who helped me to kill the lion and the bear will also deal with this uncircumcised Philistine. His attitude was an attitude of praise. He walked in there, he slung in one sling, and the giant fell down. Your giants will fall today in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you praise the Lord, as you give him glory that he deserves, he alone, you will see your giants fall by your side. Yeah, the, your giants will fall right, left, and center. It doesn't matter how big they are. Yes, they will fall in Jesus' name. The most attractive thing for a child of God is not money. It's a contentment in God. When you are content with God, you've got everything. When you've got Jesus, you've got everything. Let me tell you, the people who have houses, they have big, massive houses, and they can't live in all the rooms. You can't. I've seen people build houses in villages in Nigeria. Go there. Houses, mansions in villages in Nigeria. People think Africa is poor. It's a lie of the devil. I'm telling you the truth. There's riches there as well as poverty, just like the rest of the world. When you see those mansions, it's amazing. There's nobody living there. The gates are massive. The houses are massive. And then once a year, the owners will come in from the U.S., from here, from there, from the city of Lagos. They will come in from other parts of the country. They will come in and they will spend one time in such a massive big mansion. Nobody's living there. When we die, this God is so full of <laughs> might and power. We better just be very reverentially fearing him. Because when we die, that house, that car, some of them is the gate man that lives in that house. It's the driver of the car that lives in that house. It's a housemaid that lives in that house. Yeah. And let me tell you, when we now die, that house can't fit into the grave. That grave is so small. I mean, look at my size. By the time they dig my grave, it will be so tiny. You can't put a car. You can't even afford to put a, a handbag. You can only put a small Bible. Eh? You can't even take anything. Even if they wear gold for you, it will just be sitting there. That skeleton would have faded away. Yeah. Yeah, let's fear God. Let's fear God because the end of our days, we don't own it. He owns us. We are his and the sheep of his pasture. Listen, child of God, if you're listening to me today and you're compromising your Christianity, you need to repent right now. Let us repent before God. What you have is not your God. If your friend don't have that car, you don't need to look down on them. You don't need to be walking around prideful. We don't need to look down on anybody because what you have will not follow you to your grave. All those things that we want to kill ourselves for. Some people have died trying to have. They have died out of sorrow. They've died out of regret. They've died out of owing debts. People have died. You have life that money cannot buy. People want to buy oxygen right now. I know what it cost when there was no oxygen for my mother to breathe. They were buying oxygen for my mother to breathe. Don't take your life for granted. Be grateful. Be grateful for your flat, your one bedroom. Be grateful for your small car. Be grateful for your, for your small flat. Be grateful for your small job. Be grateful. The God of Israel, the shepherd of your soul, will shepherd you out of your valley. He will shepherd you. He will look after you. 
He will be there for you. God will raise people to look after you. I'm amazed at what God does for us. God will raise people to help you. I pray for my helpers a lot. Because without them, I don't even know what I'll be doing. I'm telling you, my back will be aching. Maybe I'll be ill in bed. If God had not raised people to help me, how much can one man do? You must pray for your helpers. You must pray for your helpers. Because they could decide tomorrow not to help you again. They can decide we don't even help you at all. What if they're not helping? Where would you be? Pray for your helpers. The shepherd of your soul. When a shepherd is shepherding sheep, is there. The dog is there. He's keeping an eye. The one that watches over you will raise people to look after you. Will raise people to bless you. Will raise people to help you. We, all that we need is help. You think the people that are in government got there by their own merit is somebody that they know. Somebody knew somebody to know somebody to help somebody. That's how they get there. Somebody is connected to somebody. That's why you see all those important names, those big, big names. They maintain their rights in those high places forever because it's the son of the director of something that is the friend of this person that met at the golf club and they began to talk. Oh, my son is looking for a job. My daughter is looking for a job. Oh, send him to our company. We can do an internship. From there, something happens. Then this one or the, the you know, there's connections. May God bring you holy connections in Jesus' mighty name. May God bring you selfless people that will serve you. I am rest assured without a shadow of a doubt that my helpers will not die before their time. That my helpers will lack nothing. No matter what the devil deals to them, they will not go down. They will not go down. Your helpers will not go down in the name of Jesus. The Lord shall supply all their needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. May you be blessed this morning. This is not the message that I wrote about. This is not a message that I planned, but God had planned. Praise the Lord. You are valued. You are valuable. You are important. God gave a son for you. If you're not valued, how can God raise somebody to come and help you to get to know him more? To come back into the fold. To save our eternal life. Glory be to God. If you are that person listening to me online right now, our lives are not our own. Don't toy with your life. Don't take your life for granted. There's hope in Christ. I'm asking you today, don't look behind anymore. God wants you to turn your head and begin to look forward. But he's come here to help. On that day, I gave my life to Christ. I didn't even know what I had done. But I knew that I needed the Savior. I knew that I wanted to give my heart to Jesus. And the day I did it, I've never looked back. All glory to God. I want to invite you to meet my friend. I want to invite you to come and meet my lover. The love of my life. The one who has helped me. I want you to come and meet our Savior. He will help you too. He will not discriminate against you. He will not reject you. He will not hate on you. He's been waiting for you all this time. Will you come? Will you come? And if that's you as a Christian and you have gone far, will you come back home? Will you come back home and just repent? Pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come before you today and I ask you to deliver me. Deliver me from my old ways. Deliver me from unbelief. Forgive me, O oh God. Forgive my trespasses. I ask you for forgiveness. I repent of my ways. And I ask you today to be my own personal Lord and Savior. Come and be my shepherd, the shepherd of my soul. And lead me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. I'm asking you today, Jesus, come and be my Lord, the master of my soul. I release my soul to you. I release my will to you. I give my heart to you. And I ask you to receive me as one of your own from today and forever. In Jesus' name, I pray. I want you to pray one more and say, Lord, lead me. To a church that is alive. A church where I can grow. A church where 
I will be taught to know you more. I pray in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Take a moment and forgive yourself. We make mistakes. Forgive yourself. Don't beat yourself down. All God wants is your presence, your heart, and the determination to repent and change. That's all. He will not beat you down. He will not knock you down because he loves us all. All of us are valuable. You are valuable. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you for praying that prayer. And may the Spirit of the Lord continue to watch over you, to keep you, and to prosper you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. And thank you for listening. Amen.